Okay, I'd like to talk about tone and pitch. Uh, these are two things that kind of go hand in hand, but not really. Uh, but I want to connect them and show you some things that I think might be helpful. Uh, the first thing is pitch. Um, pitch is a big subject because if you have no pitch at all, uh, it's hard to sometimes even find a note. So if you're, you know, ah, you're, ah, you're trying to, ah, you'll actually hear your voice come up to the resonant or the actual tone or pitch of a note. And you hear it start to kind of vibrate until all of a sudden it gets nice and smooth, kind of like airplane engines when they start to get in sync and all of a sudden they sound like they're they're running in unison. Uh, that's There's all kinds of ways of finding pitch, but for my purpose, what I want to talk about pitch um, is different than this, is I'm hoping you're a little bit more advanced than that, especially if you're here uh, in volume two. And that is this, pitch is best heard uh, and experienced and felt from these bright sounds that I'm giving you guys, a nice bright timbre. So if I'm going, a la, you know, la, la, remember I got my jaw open, I'm, you know, my tongue's dropped, I guess I have this nice bright, nice bright timbre. If I go, la, la, Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there isn't a place for that. In fact, in classical, uh, you know, classical music, obviously, like bel canto, uh, opera. <laughs> you know, they have these really dark, we call them covered sounds or dark sounds, darkening the, the tonal quality. Um, it's Baroque, it's big, it's, it's, it's what it is. I'm not a big fan, or I'm not a fan of that at all, obviously for uh, classic pop rock or you know, R&B or blues, country, jazz, any of that. So uh, what we do is, remember I said how that bright timbre, ah, really grows the voice, that's the, that's the timbre and tone that grows the voice. Well, what happens, and I think you probably have already experienced this, is if you've been working the lessons and you've been doing this with diligence, you've probably noticed that that bright sound has gotten bigger and brighter and there's a ping to it, a nice bright ping to the sound. Now, that sound really helps with being able to zero in on pitch. So I went, say you will, say you won't, make up your mind tonight, say you do, say you don't, be my guide in light. So if you say you will, say you won't, right? Now, if I, that's nice and bright, and it makes it real easy to hear through the sound and hear where the pitch is at at all times. If I were to cover that sound and make it darker, say you will, say you won't, make up your mind tonight, say you do, say you don't, you're going to notice that there's a tendency to sound flat or to darken the sound and cover the sound. It sounds like under pitch a little bit, right? So here's the thing. When you're singing your phrases, and we did Sarah, I mean, you know, Sarah, Sarah, souls are brewing in your eyes tonight. Sarah, Sarah, no time is a good time for goodbyes. Right? Right. <clears throat> I actually choked a little on that. But anyway, as we're going through those phrases, if you notice, if I don't cover the sound going, no time is a good time for goodbyes. If I keep it bright on the chord, not too bright, not, no time, not too bright, no time, not dark, but if I keep it nice and bright on the chord, and I'm not like one minute, I'm not going, no time is a, you hear how it sounds flat when I cover the sound? So what I'm going to ask you to do, at least for now, until you get fairly good at this, is to keep all your phrases bright, your sounds nice and bright, so that you can really zero in on the pitch. Because once you do that, then all of a sudden, when you start to cover a sound, then at least you'll hear in your head exactly where the pitch is. Because I like to tell people, I like to have them see through the music rather than just hear the music, especially when you have headphones on and you're recording and you have all the sound pressure from headphones. It, that's some people take one ear off. I don't, I'm not a fan of that because I think you should sing through the music and get your pitch there rather than trying to hear out here and in here. I think that can really throw you off. But anyway, getting back to this is, and here's why I say this. As we go lower and we sing something sexy and low and, you know, uh, you know, in a town without a name, in a heavy downpour, 
Thought he cast his own shadow by the backstage door. You know, you get guys like David Coverdale. And they, baby, 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 I need your loving, baby. You know, you get that kind of big, fat, round sound. That's cool, because you don't want to go, baby, 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 I need your loving. Right? Paul Rogers might do that. But, but anyway, um, and if you notice, as, I go, as we go lower, there's a tendency to want to cover or darken the sound. Well, then there's also going to be a tendency to not hear the pitch as clearly, right? And there's going to be a tendency to go flat in the pitch because the sound gets darkened, even though you think you're actually on pitch from the bright sound that you sang before, but you go lower and you tend to cover the sound. So for now, let's keep it nice and bright as we move on uh, into um, volume three, then we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can come in and out of covered sounds. Because if you're singing an ooh, ooh, it's just by nature covered. If you're singing E, E, 